Hi, welcome to today's Asthma Edge WASD report. It is November and we just had a big election yesterday. But before we get to all of that information, I want to introduce you to our panelists. We have Sterling Smith. He is our Director of Ag Research. And joining us today, we have Mike Tuhill, who is our Corporate Agronomist. And they will be talking to us about what to expect on today's report, which will be live here in about, uh, what, 23 minutes? About 18 like minutes. 18, ah! <laughs> 18 okay. minutes. All right, tell us what we should be expecting. I, Sterling, I mean, it's you said maybe it might not be a big mover, but we just had a big election. I mean, it was midterms, but I know there were some people expecting some things to happen yesterday that maybe didn't happen. Yeah, the, the election so far, the effects on the outside markets have been fairly quiet. One thing, we have a big CPI number tomorrow that frankly is probably more important to the uh, rest of the markets and what happened with the election. I know here in Nebraska, we saw no surprises with anything. Um, there's still a couple of questions about who exactly is gonna control the House and Senate. And it appears the Republicans may get control of the Senate, but again, there's gonna be a runoff in Georgia. So essentially, while there was some shuffling and shifting and they'll try to make the most hay out of this, it was largely a non-event. We are seeing a little bit of risk off activity, but again, equity markets and bond markets have done fairly well. And tomorrow's CPI number will be uh, obviously a much bigger event. One thing, uh, we do have two other things outside the WASD that we should talk about. First of all, there's a news story that just broke that Mexico is not going to be able to buy GMO corn from the United States. This oh. is an executive order coming out of the president of Mexico and part of an initiative they have by 2024 not to buy GMO corn. If this does come to fruition, and that is a big, big if, that would obviously represent a material problem to U.S. corn exports into Mexico. Wow. So we will need to follow this story as it does in fact develop, but given what their corn needs are, I don't see this necessarily as being something that they're really going to be able to efficiently or effectively do. But again, it is a developing story. The second thing we had, we had a CONAB report from Brazil this morning. And right now they have soybean production coming in at a whopping 153 million and a half metric tons, which was up from 152 spot 35 last year. Growing conditions in Brazil have improved materially from last year over the previous 30 days. The forecast going forward for the next 14 days though, not so much, there is some dryness coming in. So if we do in fact see that happening, that is going to be, uh, you know, something that could be a potential market mover. Uh, they had their corn pr production at 126 million. This was up noticeably from last year. And at 126.4, it was a little bit down than their last report. So again, big numbers, and this will be something that could be an influence uh, as we go along, but it's going to depend a lot on the weather over the next uh, 30 to 45 days. So with that, today's WASD, the expectations are for corn ending stocks to come in at 1.218 billion. Uh, that is up about 50 million uh, bushels from last time around for soybeans. Uh, ending stocks are expected to be at 2.11, and that's up from 200. So there are some ideas that we will see some higher ending stocks. Question is, how does the USDA get here? Are they going to cut exports further? Or are they going to, uh, you know, adjust the yields? Those are the two big variables, I think, in today's report. One thing I would note, uh, unlike most of the WASDs we've seen throughout 2022, the estimates for this are very, very tight. There wasn't a lot of deviation among the 35 or 40 analysts they poll. There was not a big deviation. Um, so a big surprise should have an outsized, outsized effect on the market, but the chances of getting that big surprise may or may not be uh, so much. So again, we'll see what we get. Right now, the markets are here. For, 
like here. We'll go ahead and put the markets up real quick. And let's see here if we can put the markets up here real quick. Hold on. Let's see what we can do here. There. While you're get while you're getting that for Sterling, I do want to let you all know that if you do have any questions, please go ahead and put those in the chat box. We'd be happy to answer those for you. While the meeting is going on today, and we are recording today's meeting, so we will have that for you in an upcoming daily market outlook. And I'd like to remind everybody about Friday too. Friday is going to be a holiday. There won't be any COT reports. The markets will be partially open. Uh, trading floors will be closed, but there will still be market action. However, there will not be any uh, DMOs coming out on Friday. The weekly wrap up will be coming out on Monday. So what we have here, as far as the markets are doing right now uh corn's down about five and a half five and three quarters beans were lower earlier and they have since improved and the wheat market is remaining four to five cents lower uh, with the exception of chicago which is down about 10. so right now the markets are really very very quiet and we move on to other items here the s p's are a little bit lower can we see my screen clearly is that yeah you look good look fine sterling mm -hmm. okay so we're a little bit lower, but we are off the worst levels of the day. One of the big movers, and we don't normally talk about this, is Bitcoin. Bitcoin got beat up severely yesterday, and as you can see, it's down another 8% today. One of the crypto exchanges, an outfit called FTX, appears to be going under, and that is uh, adding some nervousness to the markets, uh, along with you know tro still trying to sort out what's going on with the elections. And uh, the dollar is just a little bit higher, and some of that crypto is probably driving that. In the good news department, crude oil doesn't seem to be able to hold $90 a barrel, which is good. And uh, diesel prices are down 10 cents again today, and we've seen energy prices drop rather meaningfully over the last two or three days. So there is, there is at least we have that going for us. Yeah. That is very good. So... Mike, what do you have on your plate this morning here? <laughs> yeah, not, not too much, Sterling. I'm kind of like you. Um, don't know if there'll be a lot of news on this from the production standpoint. Um, here in Illinois, crop is huge. Um, ground piles starting to show up everywhere. Um, basis not looking very strong. But once you go um, west of the um, Mississippi, basis levels are pretty high. So I guess looking for my number, um, kind of going against the I'll be a contrarian here today. I think the consensus is the U.S. corn yield gets a little bit stronger. I'm actually just going to drop down slightly to 171.5. Not a lot of news there. I um, really don't have a good feel on soybeans, Sterling and Christie. I think we go just slightly under 50. So I'm going to see how the numbers turn out today. Yeah, I bumped my yields up uh, ever so slightly in where my estimates were, and it put me right in the middle of the crowd. So. Right now, the uh, expected corn yield per acre surveys 171 spot 84. It was 171 spot nine. I think I added two tenths there and added a tenth to the soybeans. And um, really, we'll see how this plays out and whether or not we get any big, big surprises. The November report, for the most part, usually doesn't have a lot of big surprises built into it, but uh, we have had a couple of instances where there have been some some unusual things going on. One market that uh, has been very interesting here, and we've seen a lot of movement recently, is the cotton market. And the U.S. crop conditions for cotton have been very, very troubling. And uh, so we could see a potential cut maybe in the cotton ending stocks. If that were to happen, that could create some additional bullishness in the cotton. Right now, mostly it looks like funds chasing one another, and uh, that's caused most of the volatility. The survey for ending stocks for cotton are 2.73, and last time around it was 2.8. So if we got a number around 2.5, that might uh, embolden some cotton bulls and might be able to push that market up. Are there any harvest issues um, here in the last couple weeks that are affecting anything? Everybody's getting in the fields and getting things out right now? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I drove down to uh, Wichita on Monday and back yesterday. Everything I saw, it was all harvested with the exception of one small field of corn in south central Nebraska. Everything was done. And I know around here, pretty much, we had a threat of rain. We actually did have some rain on Friday. Water actually fell from the sky for the first time in a couple of months. And I think even throwing that into the forecast got everybody moving. Also, our temperatures are going to go downhill. It's going to be 76 today. The high tomorrow morning is going to be 64. The low tomorrow night is going to be a whopping 19. And then we're looking temperatures in the 30s and lows in the teens for the next two weeks. So whatever last gasp of summer is probably going to go away today. And I think guys are probably like, I can get it done now, get it done now. And they did. So, yeah, not much rain coming from the Mississippi doesn't look like either. The storm's going to be in the Dakotas that are along the East Coast. So not a lot of water in the Mississippi. Yeah, they picked up some pretty good rain um, last week in the Mississippi in the southern area. And it looks like the weather pattern is shifting. As far as those storms go, you can get a lot of snow up in the Dakotas and Minnesota over the next few days. However, none of that is going to make it down here to Nebraska. In fact, it's never going to rain here again. I the next two weeks, there is no precipitation in the forecast whatsoever, other than a little bit of a chance of rain tomorrow morning. And that started as 85%. And as the story goes, we're down to 40%. So I want to finish up the lawn on Friday. So we'll see. <laughs> How does that on the rail strike situation look, Sterling? Well, it's talks are ongoing. Um, I think the administration will probably be willing since everyone is keyed up to fight inflation and a rail strike would obviously throw a big wrench into supply chains. I think uh, the administration is probably going to be uh, reasonably active in trying to uh, contain that, regardless of where the, uh, the election numbers fall, because at this point it's not really going to be anything I think that's going to be able to make that meaningful of a difference. We'll see how the Republicans readjust all of this, given how the election actually worked out. I'm not going to get into the details yet, simply because, one, I haven't had a chance to cover them and figure out exactly what's going on. And, two, I don't think anybody else quite knows what's going on either. We do have an announcement uh, from Donald Trump expected on the 15th, a week uh, from yesterday. Mm -hmm. And we can assume that he's probably going to announce that he's going to run, but... Again, it's a political announcement, uh, and we really don't know anything for certain right at this point. It could change. Right. Mm. So, with that being said, we do have uh, export sales coming out tomorrow, and we can see last week's uh, numbers. And again, these numbers remain remarkably depressed. Cotton was a little bit better. When I put in my estimates for what's going on, we saw no flash sales over the last week. The uh, new crop sales that we usually see, as you can see, old crop and total are the same. So we have not seen a lot of new crop sales. It's been very slow, and I don't expect that to change. Uh, on this report, at least, the dollar has eased up a little bit, and but prices haven't really opened a door. And I right now, I think people are still staying hand to mouth at the moment, and that Mexico news is not uh, not something that we really need to hear at the moment. Take a look and see how December corn, this, this news, while somewhat new, it was not completely and totally unexpected. And if we look at corn prices, coming into the report again, we have been caught in this very, very $6.50 to $7 range for a very long time now dating back all the way, well, really to the middle of August. And eventually this is going to change, but it's going to take some impetus for this to happen. And if we see certainly better uh, South American crops, that's going to be an issue. Here, why don't I share my screen so we can see my chart? <laughs> that might be nice. There we go. And as you can see, again, prices have been very, very dull. And usually markets that get dull, get loud. And most likely we're probably looking at, you know, probably risks slowly tilting their way more to the downside than from the upside. Looking at soybeans, we did see some pretty good fun buying here uh, about a week ago on that product.
nothing nothing particularly volatile or exciting going on with the soybeans. We'll see if the WASD brings any uh, big surprises. We could see global numbers aren't expected to jump that much, but we could see global numbers maybe get cut for corn, and that would be something that would be uh, beneficial uh, to the corn market. Let's go ahead and can we see our scoreboard here? Not yet. Not yet. All right. Let's let's try that. How's that? Yes, we can. There we go. So as you can see, we've got uh, just under a couple, right at a couple of minutes away from the report. Or is anything else going on? Export inspections for soybeans last week were very strong. And we are doing, we are managed to get those beans moved. So that's at least some good news uh, for what we're seeing for things. As far as any of the outside markets, interest rates are down and the 10 years holding at 411, which should be generally a tailwind for things and risk assets. But right now the market is, markets are again being awfully tame in front of that uh, big CPI number tomorrow. If we get a, uh, a pretty good print on that, if it's a little bit less than expected, we could probably see some pretty good risk on trade. If it misses to the other way, well, the last time we had a CPI number, the uh, Stock market took a pretty good nosedive, but managed to come all the way back. So uh, tomorrow is going to be, uh, should be an interesting day. Hmm. Did we have any questions from the audience? No questions yet. I know, um, and I know we don't have much time here, but I know at some point last month, I know Brooks had asked some questions about um, barge um, traffic. And, and how that was trading, and maybe that would be something we want to look at at That's, some point. Yes, we're, we're about 30 seconds away from the numbers, so we'll get the numbers and go over those, and then I'll pull up the barge numbers and the barge freight, and we'll see exactly where that's trading. So coming into the report, corn's down four to five cents, soybeans are up five to six, and wheat is down 11, and... We should be seeing some numbers here momentarily. Go. In about nine seconds. Yeah, that's mine says. Kind of like NASA like a, here. We need like a <laughs> countdown, don't we? <laughs> right there. You got it right there. And okay. there we go. Here we go. Corn ending stocks 11.82. So uh, a little higher than what was last time around, but a little bit under expectations. Uh, soybean ending stocks at 220 above expectations by a uh, mm -hmm. reasonable little chunk there. So that's uh, probably going to be seen as a little bit bearish. Corn prices right now down about seven soybeans. Uh, we're up eight, nine cents, and now they are down nine to 10 cents. Wheat prices are not doing much. Soybean uh, yields, uh, the USDA bumped them up back to 50.2. Corn at 172.3 was, uh, again, a little bit of a bump, which really, I I was kind of looking for that. Harvest went a little bit better than expected. Wheat ending stocks at 571. They were 576 last time. So, again, not a big shocker. Let's move down here and let's look at the cotton ending stocks. Oops, 3.0. There's your probably your biggest yeah. surprise on the report. Everyone was looking for the same or lower, seeing this number come up is a bit of a surprise, and that will probably be a little bit hard on the cotton market, which the cotton market's been doing a pretty good job of being hard on itself here of late. And let's see, corn world ending stocks came in at 301, uh, same as last time and right in line with expectations. Uh, soybean uh, world ending stocks 102, up from 101, so a smidge bearish there. World cotton ending stocks at 87, probably balances out the little bit of the increase that we saw in the U.S. So overall, we could call the cotton report neutral. We can call it neutral for corn and neutral for soybeans. Um, so again, not a lot of big, big surprises. Here is the uh, Argentinian numbers. We're looking at 52. Uh, and 55 for old and new crop in Argentina, so 55 right in line with expectations. 
for Brazil, 126 on the corn and 126 on the beans, excuse me, and 116 on the corn. Again, right in line with what we had last time. So again, no big surprises here. And uh, it's a little, the, the ending stocks number is a smidge bearish for the beans. They're down about four cents now. And corn is currently down about four and a half. So with that being said, let's take a look at the barge freight. see what we have here and again 1362 that is really quite an elevated number oh, I see we have a little problem getting a chart on that let's go so those again are remaining elevated but they are off the highest levels uh, that we have seen so again seeing uh, you know a little bit of improvement it's still problematic uh, does that pretty much correspond with what you've been seeing, Mike? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you know, let's, let's switch back to the markets here and see how this is all shaping out. We'll adjust what we're sharing there. And which screen? Oh, we're seeing the large screen. We don't need to see the large screen. <laughs> That's not where the excitement is. It's <laughs> here. And again, it's this report is again, we, we don't usually look for surprises on this report, and we're not really getting a lot. So looking at the quotes again, you can see here what prices are doing. Corn actually improving a little bit now. We were down five, and we're down two. And along with that, we're seeing uh we're not seeing the screen. Oh. We're not seeing the screen yet, Sterling. It's kind of a gray screen there. Oh, we're having a bit of a... Not sure what it was. There it is. There we go. Operator <laughs> error. <laughs> yeah, like you said, not much going on today, is there? No, this report, these reports are often, often in November are very quiet. The ones in December are also typically the USDA doesn't do much, so that sets the stage for a big report in January. So, Christy, when we do our December WASDI, are we going to have our uh, virtual holiday party with that? Is that what we're going to be doing? Sounds like a plan. I think everybody should be wearing their uh, Christmas sweaters and. for our report. Do you want to say a little bit about that? Yeah, this is actually what we're going to be talking about on the November 3rd Thursday meeting is going to be more important than what went on today, obviously, because what happened today was not all that exciting. But we will have Jeff Dorn from Planalytics, and we're going to be talking about South American weather. That is, for the bulls, the most material risk that we have to the market right now. The dollar has settled down noticeably. Uh, you know, we're at least not ripping higher and we're, we're seeing some stability there. And if we see, you know, increased South American production, two things about that. One, obviously, there'll be more grain for the world to buy. The second thing is, is the La Nina easing? Because if that is, that's going to change our weather patterns coming into this spring and for next summer in the United States. And an improvement in our weather patterns obviously means more production and with input costs and where fertilizer prices are, um, it's going to be very important to pay attention to how things go, um, you know, in December and January uh, in South America, because that can certainly set the stage for lower prices. And we want to be in front of these good prices while we uh, while we have them. Mm -hmm. We are not getting any questions. Um, Mike, is there anything you wanted to add? For today, I mean, we've got a uh, a lot of um, 
Well, we don't have a lot of people on just yet, but I, I just didn't know if there was any information. We really didn't have a lot of change here, except no. for maybe with the cotton. No, looking yeah. at the state, looking at the state numbers, it was pretty much as expected. Like Sterling said, um, slightly better crops in the east made up for some of the uh, slight decreases in the west. So, mm -hmm. not much news on there. So, pretty much, yeah, pretty much not a big mover. So, not not a big market mover today. That was, uh, uh, you know, kind of something that uh, you know wasn't completely unexpected. Um, you know, given the nature of this market. One thing, if, uh, you, you know, you're not supposed to blow your own horn. That is something that's just <laughs> not polite. But here, we'll share a little something here with you here. If you can share well, this. Tell us how you did, though, Sterling. How did, you... how did I do today? Well, we're going to share this screen. And look who's number one. Wow. Corn ending uh -huh. stocks. Number one again. And... <laughs> Yeah, not only that, let's take a look and see how things worked out for soybeans. Mm -hmm. Let's see, and for the soybean ending stocks, well, look who was number one for soybean ending stocks. Wow. On the road. Mm. Wow. So, with that being said, if we don't have any other questions, um, yeah. the markets look like they're going to go into hibernation. Uh, tomorrow will be the export sales report. I am going to add in the inflation numbers if they are, in fact, a big shocker. But again, the weekly wrap up and everything will be coming out on Monday, and I'd like to wish everyone a happy Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We, we very much thank our veterans for their service, and AgriSampo North America is observing that as a holiday, so we will be closed on that day. Um, so there there will be no, uh, no emails from us for the weekly wrap-up, nor for the daily market outlook. So, Yes, uh, Sterling's reports will be coming out, and Mike's, if he has any, will be coming out on Monday mm -hmm. for that. Uh, so if you would please uh, watch for those on Monday. If you're not receiving those, we do want to make sure that you uh, sign up for those and do that at marketinginfo at sampointernational.com. We do want to thank you. Oh, so please go ahead. Podcasts. Remember, when you get podcasts twice a day that cover all the market activity, everything that's going on, covers grains, livestock, everything that's moving the market and any pertinent news. So if you're not getting those, they're free and easy to sign up for, aren't they, Christy? They are free and easy. And and even if you, you can't get right to that podcast or if, whatever, you can go right to our website and our webpage and they're right there. We post them that link right there as well. And they're in our DMO. So you can go to it that way. It, it, so easy to get it. We give you every access to it. Um, and it's the information so, so good. And obviously you're getting information from the guy who is number one on all the lists. So <laughs> who else do you want to get your information from? And you want the guy who's number one. And that wasn't just a lucky guess. I've hit number one several times this year. And not just for grains. I've also done it for unemployment numbers, inflation numbers, and a host of other things. So it's not just corn and beans. You can get all the information you need, especially about your input costs, which are going to be just as important again this year for the price of corn and beans go. That is true. And we've talked about energies. We've talked about all sorts of different information all year long. And Sterling has just been spot on with that. And Mike as well with, with the information he has with what's been going on with our crops. So. You, you have the best team working on your behalf here with our ASNA Edge team. 
you can't ask for a better team to be on your side. So be sure to follow us through the DMO, through our podcasts, through all of our reports. We're here to help you and help your, your agents or to help you with your agency, to help your producers. So please be sure to sign up. If you have any questions, again, send those to us at marketinginfo at sampointernational.com. We'll be happy to answer those as soon as we possibly can. Thank you again so much for being with us today and watch for this recording. It will be available soon. Take care, have a wonderful weekend, and we will talk to you soon.